and a good bit of being fussed at on some of my other videos well especially one video my Gideon uh, my insane Gideon build video it was literally a video I posted of me at the very end of the match when I just started doing crazy good and I actually did good throughout the entire match but whatever reason I did not decide to press the record button and I didn't go into a live stream so I only had a few minutes of footage of me with this deck so I'm going to go back over the deck in this video but I'm also going to talk about the PS4 Pro and after a couple of days since the information has been put out I've really been doing a whole bunch of digging into what specs and what features this console has and what reasons are going to persuade me to go ahead and get the PS4 Pro this holiday season well, for what most of you guys came here first, let's 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 check out this deck I have going. And this is my uh, Gideon Ender deck, and it's pretty much entirely geared towards damage, penetration, and a little bit of extra mana. And occasionally, I will throw on armor at the end of the game when the other guys and the other team are starting to hit pretty heavy. And I want to keep that like 10, 10 kills, one death ratio going, which I usually manage to do with him. Uh, first things first may not be the first thing I pick in the video but first things first is my amp crystal it is very important because it is almost entirely energy damage but it also comes with a huge chunk of mana at the very end and it's gonna give me full cards gonna give me an extra 300 mana to go on and if you know anything or if you've played with Gideon at all seen him played he consumes mana faster than you could believe and his abilities that form you the most CXP uh, would be that that meteor strike and you want that thing to just about kill every minion in front of you damage each minion once uh, twice and then drop the meteor and the whole crowd is all your CXP no worrying about your minions stealing your last hit uh, next up is a chronomancer disc 5% cooldown also more mana so damage mana and a little bit of cooldown 5% doesn't seem like much but over the course of an hour long game that adds up to a lot of time in between cast save Magna Lens, which I rarely ever use. I'm, it's hardly ever a chance where the guy on the enemy team is rocking enough energy protection for me to have to worry about energy penetration of that degree outside of the cards that I already have. Shadow Scroll is another card that I have that gives me a little bit of energy pin with a decent bit of, well, actually a lot of damage thrown on inside of it as well. Sorcerer's Ward, a little bit more energy penetration with a energy penetration shot card major cast for some more damage and drain I kind of balance that card out that's probably gonna be the first one I get because it comes with the ward I start off with a little bit of damage a decent bit of pin and a little bit of life steal doesn't seem like much at the very beginning but trust me it works a lot and that ward itself will save you from early ganks and wasting precious time at the start of the match watching other people get kills even if it's only a 15 to 20 second wait but for that rest of that game, it'll save you tons of times and let you get out of situations that you would have otherwise not been able to see coming. Uh, Stalker's Key, if I do have to play the jungle, if I have to go and get harvesters up when the team isn't doing what they're supposed to, when our junglers are just killing the means and not putting up harvesters, I absolutely hate that, but I can definitely be a backup for it. This gets thrown in either way, just because like later on in the game, I put it on for that extra life steal, and it, I think I end with something along the lines of 20? Is that what it is? Yeah, I end with uh, exactly 20% life steal. So 20% life steal. My cast aren't that fast. They're only hitting like 100 something. But that extra 20, 30 health per hit it is really good at keeping me in the fight and helping my teammates out. Next up is a tempered plate if I do get that far into the match. Now sometimes I opt out of it and go for the, go for the Magna Lens instead. But very rarely, typically I'll pick the tempered plate for this extra 300 health and I think I end up with like 176 physical armor which is really good for ganks. Gideon's one of his major weaknesses would be Chimera and your Rangers because they can hit him in his ult even if he's in the air. So I keep that physical plate just for them. Weave Mesh for when I rarely ever need to protect against energy damage. Usually I'm pushing the other energy damage dealers out of my way and not having to worry about it. Occasionally they get a really OP Murdoch and I'll have to put this on instead of that, but not often. So pretty much that that about makes up my build. Uh, thrown in with a regular harvester's key, a health potion, and a mana potion. I could run those at the very start and opt out of this, but really at the very start, if I'm going to have to play the jungle, Stalker's Key is better just because of this one feature. Plus 2.5, yeah, it's 2.5 lifesteal, which is it's, it's, it's negligible, it's almost ignorable, but basic attacks on jungle minions restore plus 8 health. No matter what you hit, 8 health per hit 
that's enough stacked with your own health regen to allow you to jungle indefinitely. This is a wonderful card. If you have a stalker's key and you're jungling, you're playing a cor uh, corruption character, definitely want to invest in this thing. That's it for the build. Let's see if we can get going into a match. And see, I'm almost, I'm almost always right at that six minute mark. Like after after showing off that deck, that's like where I know I'm, I'm coming time to get, get on to the next part. But I also want to talk to you guys today about the PlayStation 4 Pro. What are your thoughts on it? Do you think you're going to go ahead and get it? What are your reasons and why? Um, I've looked up all of the specs and the improvements to me, they seem to be worth it. I'm paying for a faster internet and for whatever reason, I think it's the actual console itself because it's the only thing in my house that really struggles to use the full power that is given from my internet unless I go like directly ethernet cable and then I can get like my 170 to almost 200 but I'm not like 250 as in uh, I read on my computer or the 210 or 215 that I read on my phone when I do uh, a basic Wi-Fi test so I'm definitely looking forward to that PS4 Pro having access to 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi because I have a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi router and it's being that channel is basically wasted because nothing else in this house really warrants or is close enough to that 5 gigahertz router to for it to really make sense 5 gigahertz routers um, are 802.11 slash AC routers they are a shorter distance broadcast but they're a much higher bandwidth broadcast so they allow you to like if you're like a person that, that's like me that downloads a lot of games and you have like these big games that require huge updates you don't want to sit there and wait two hours on a game to download through Wi-Fi I'm gonna to have to run an Ethernet cable much like I do right now when I stream and it's, it's really a hassle I have long enough Ethernet cables they just run through the house and it it annoys the people that I live with mostly my girlfriend uh, I can, can he, he can deal with a, a Ethernet cable coming out of our room because I wanted the route in my room that's where I usually play with the most but since I moved my entire setup into the living room oh my god he stole Gideon Great, I'm gonna have to take this penalty. I am so sorry for having to be that guy, but I really hate doing this in the stream. Like, I, I, it looks like my stream is mistitled. This is supposed to be a video showing off the build that I go 15 and 20 kills and no deaths with. So yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna pick. Hopefully the guy on their team doesn't. Oh hell. Well, back to the PS4 Pro while this this timer runs out. Um, they've added the 802.11 slash AC Wi-Fi for the 5 gigahertz. Um, they've more than doubled the processing power more than doubled it it went from 1.8 teraflops uh, 1.78 teraflops on the original PS4 to now it is 4.2 teraflops that is a far more powerful system and like there were there were select few games and it's a decent number of games in the PlayStation 4 that ran at a native 1080p and 60 frames like if you played a Call of Duty Black Ops that was one of them that's why that game looks so fluid and smooth but anything over 60 frames per second is is fairly unnecessary in reality it's more of a, a I'm going to get penalty applied for five minutes but it's, it's more of a it's more of a marketing thing to get people to uh, both spend more money on better CPUs to, to push 140 frames or 120 or even 90 frames and also have a more powerful GPU to be able to this is gonna be a five minute waiter I know it um, you're gonna have to have like a far more powerful GPU to push 4K at 120 frames than you would for 4K at 60. Now I'm not saying 30, 30 frames per second is acceptable in every game. Certain games, of course, is, is fine. You don't need 60 frames per second in every game. Now I know it's uh, it looks better in some games. It does in like a first-person shooter or a racing game or if you're playing like a side-by-side -side fighter like Mortal Kombat. Of course, you want 60 frames a second. You want that slightly faster reaction time and I've actually went down and crunched numbers to figure out the difference in latencies and the difference in time between a frame at 30 frames a second and a frame at 60 frames a second is 16 milliseconds 16 milliseconds is you take the zero you take the decimal point and you bring it over one two three times and you put your six there right in front of that spot and then a one there that's 16 so that's a 60 milliseconds. It is, it is three zeros back for 60 millisecond difference. That is that is very minute. Most TVs these days, or most even most like high high end, like I'm talking five six hundred dollar computer monitors here, their latencies get down to about four to seven milliseconds. 
So, I mean, they add that in. But if you have like a a, a, a run of the mill HD TV, you can get as high as like 40 or 50 milliseconds latency just from the TV or the monitor, let alone worrying about the refresh rate. So yes, it helps to a degree. It may increase fluidity, but at 60 frames a second, that is pretty much the border. That is the borderline of what the human eye can perceive. Not the eye itself, but the brain can't process that difference. Uh, to put it in, in, in a, better, a better term, if you've ever seen a hummingbird, hummingbird's wings flap at a maximum of about 70, 70 wing beats a minute. So, I'm sorry, not a minute, 70, uh, 70 wing movements per second. So that's 70 hertz or 70 frames a second. But once you get, um, once you get past 64 to 65 ish, that, that margin of gain is lost. You can definitely tell between 60 and 30. But once you go beyond that, your eyes themselves aren't properly comprehending, not your eyes, your brain isn't processing the data at a high enough rate. For it to make a tangible difference it, because it's so small it's literally coming down to eight milliseconds at that point going from 60 to 120 it's literally eight milliseconds difference uh, that's that's minuscule it's almost unnecessary so what sony has done here they have decided to go ahead up the teraflops of the system they're running something along the lines of the equivalent of a rx 470 uh, i have to correct my last video it's not a rx 480 it's, it's under power compared to that it's, it's more along the lines of an RX 470 uh, at 4.2 teraflops and it's, it's slightly uh, it's a slightly slower clock speed on it but the advantage that the PlayStation 4 will have over that would be that consoles in general benefit from a much lower level API and what lower level API is if you follow PC at all or PC building at all you'd understand that a lower level API is something like DirectX 12 or Vulkan and that's why AMD processors take such monstrous leaps in performance when running lower level API, like which is ran on the computer. I mean, like which is ran on the console. So even though it's 4.2 teraflops, you're getting, hmm, what's up, man? I'm uh, explaining while I wait on this timer to go out because somebody else, of course, had to pick Gideon. Uh, Robert, he says, what's up, ghost? While I'm waiting uh, on this timer to go out because somebody else had to pick Gideon, of course, because I decided to pick Gideon for the title of this video. Um, I was just explaining the the features and upgrades of the PlayStation 4. Robert, you think you're gonna get the um, think you're gonna go for a PlayStation 4 Pro this holiday, or you you're on the fence about it, or you're not really sure? It's just like a nah, I don't need it. But the PlayStation 4 Pro is gonna have more power, and what they're doing is some games will run 4K, 30 frames a second native. Some games will still be 1080p, 60 frames a second, but they will use a, a form of upscaling and a mixture of upscaling and anti-aliasing to get to that 4K image. Now, if you're gonna, if you guys have a 4K TV at home or a 4K monitor at home already, you could definitely go and check out the stream that they did. Uh, I wanna say it was four days ago, five days ago. PlayStation did a stream where they showed the games in 4k quality and i played them on my 4k tv and man it is beautiful like I, I i'm already familiar with 4k upscaling what's up trav um i'm already familiar with 4k upscaling because i have a 4k tv at home and i previously had a similar size 1080p i have a 50 inch 4k tv right now that's what i play on in either one of the rooms we have two of them but before i had a 1080p in the living room and it was a 47 and I set both of these TVs up side by side, one with my friend's PS4, one with my own PS4, and we ran Avatar. Both of us had the movie Avatar, so we ran Avatar side by side on both of these TVs. They're both the same. They're both the um, Vizio. 4K TVs, uh, Robert Campbell, not sure, definitely considering, but then I got to get the 4K TV. 4K TVs are not as expensive as people think. Um, Sure, you could go for like a Samsung. Samsung definitely makes really great quality 4Ks, but I have a Vizio at the moment, and I can tell you it hasn't let me down yet. The only thing I can say is if you're going to get a Vizio TV, buy the extended warranty. I've had four Vizio TVs in four years, and two of them have crapped out, and one has needed repairs, and luckily I had extended warranties, so all of them were covered. And the way that worked out 
the the two that crapped out i think i spent like 700 bucks on them at the time so they broke oh i can actually get into the game so i spent 700 bucks on them at the time or six to 700 bucks on them at the time and they broke uh i bought, bought them a year apart the first one that we bought when we first moved in this apartment it, it crapped out so on the phone with the uh, warranty people they're like okay uh, money's gonna be sent to your car within two to three business days two to three business days later they gave they gave me a digital car like it was a uh, scannable through my phone and all i had to do was go into the walmart i threw the old tv out by the road went into the walmart uh actually i think this was might have been sam's no the first one was walmart so i went to the walmart and all i had to do was just go to the back pick out the next tv i wanted and at that time they had 4k tvs um but it was cheaper like right next door at sam's so i went next door to sam's walked in could use the exact same walmart card uh i walked in to sam's saw that they had literally just huh i played warframe when i first got the ps4 it, it was it was okay it, it was okay i'll probably get back on it again later if you guys want to see videos oh why are we going so heavy on energy please don't all right um but yeah, so I went to the I went to the Sam's and I think they had just dropped the price down on a Vizio 4K TV. And because originally this TV was $999. They dropped it down by 300 bucks. And this was They dropped it down by 300 bucks. So now it was um $599, I think. No, it was $699. It was $999. They dropped it down to $399. No, I say that so backwards. It was $999. They dropped it down to $699. So I saved three, it was 300 bucks off immediately. So the cash I got back from the original TV that I purchased more than covered the cost of this 4K TV that I got. And we had just happened to have two of the exact same 1080p TV. We bought them a year apart. So yeah, we, we bought them a whole, we bought them a whole year apart. And precisely a year later, I think it was like within a week. Uh, it was like within a year and a week later, the second TV that we bought that was like bought a year and a week later, it craps out. I mean, they both lasted about two years, but the um, they lasted two years apiece respectively, but a year apart is when they broke, just like a year apart is when we bought them. So same process with the second one. We go into Sam's again this time. This time, there's a slightly updated version of the exact same TV I have for the bedroom, and we just got that to replace the living room TV. So I think this one actually cost me $5.99, whereas the... 1080p TV that we had bought cost us $6.99. So once again, I had saved 100 bucks on that upgrade. So these these days, I think you can go into a Sam's or Walmart if you guys live near those, and you can grab a, a 4K 50-inch TV that shows awesome for like $530, $550. I just say add that extra 70 bucks on for that two-year warranty. So once you got the 4K TV out of the out of the way. Uh, back to the avatar like looking at the 1080p side by side With the 4k upscale from a regular 1080p blu-ray it's night and day like you can literally Like even if I didn't know which TV was which Even my buddy and he's not a techie like me. He's not all in the technology. He's like man damn that show is good I mean he has a PlayStation, but he's not really into this like I am So he was like man that 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 picture looks better. That definitely looks better and it, it was a clear win that the upscale 4K Blu-ray from a regular PS4 and a regular PS4 hooked up to a 1080 and a 4K upscaling TV, that the 4K upscaling was hands down the better picture. So everyone's given this, um, everybody's given this backlash. Everybody's given this backlash right now because it doesn't have 4K Ultra HD uh, Blu-ray player in the PS4 Pro, which for me... I was upset with it too. I don't understand why Sony would decide not to put a Sony product in a Sony product. But that's, that's the route that they chose for one reason or another. That's the way they went with it. So seeing as they didn't put the Blu-ray in it, I'm, I'm looking at the, the, the total difference in price. Because you've seen a lot of places saying, okay, well, the Xbox One S. Uh, yeah, that's the one that's out now. The Xbox One S. They're saying, well, the Xbox One S is $100 cheaper, and it comes with the Blu-ray drive. I'm like, well, not really. Yes, it comes with the UHD Blu-ray drive, but from a gamer's standpoint, it has almost a third of the power. Yes, it has almost... I'm, I'm going to go left lane. 
it has almost a third of the power. I think it's sitting at like 1.6, 1.6 teraflops compared to 4.2 teraflops on the PS4 Pro. So it's not even it's not even in the same category as far as graphical processing power goes with the PS4 Pro. And you don't have to buy a 4K TV to go with the Pro. It will just make the the like it's up to game developers, but it will make the game that you're playing already your uh, existing games look that much better because it has that much more graphical power and like if you play paragon on ps4 you've probably seen like sometimes where textures just had not rendered in like look look it's doing it right now like if you look somewhere really fast you can catch like textures when rendering into the game i want to hit this guy let's do that yeah um so the the lack of power does show on the ps4 like the the original ps4 you can see that like if i turn and i get to certain areas or like if I'm dead whenever I do die, um, I can look at, hit that guy with that again. Whenever I'm dead, I can look at other players' screens and as I switch from player to player, I have to wait a while for the textures on the screen to load in. And, and to me, that that's kind of game breaking. Now, I think that something with over double the power of the current PS4 would have no issue at all rendering in 1080p. You can still hook the PS4 Pro up to a 1080p TV and see benefits from the extra power that they're going to have. Of course, it's going to be up to game developers, but Paragon is already Paragon is already on board with an upgrade for this. They're, they're like, okay, we're definitely going to make Paragon run smooth on the PS4 Pro console. We're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna allow it to access more of its graphic more of the graphical details of our game. I'm gonna kill this guy. He is really overreaching. And I can see this Finn Mile coming up. So he's not really sneaky. Damn, I'm out of mana. He might be able to live. Okay, let's see what I can do with hitting this guy. There you go. But yeah, you're gonna still benefit from uh you're still gonna benefit from the extra power of the PS4 Pro if you have a 1080p TV. So you don't have to rush out and get a 4K TV. I would definitely consider getting a 4K TV because this 4K TV even makes my regular PS4 games look better by comparison because we still have one 1080p TV left in the house and that's in our kids room but outside of that that graphical increase people were saying well they're the same price that uh they're, they're pretty much the same system and I was like okay well the, the, the graphics are not even remotely the same they're like well that one comes with the uh ultra hd blu-ray drive like okay well the ps4 pro comes with the one terabyte hard drive now you can get a one terabyte hard drive in the xbox one s you most definitely can get it but the downside is oh you bastard he's gonna mess me up you can you can get a um you can get a one terabyte hard drive xbox one s the difference is that a one terabyte hard drive xbox one s it's only 50 bucks cheaper than a console that is three times more powerful than it. The PS4 Pro is 399 with a one terabyte hard drive. Now, of course, it's missing, it's missing the Ultra Blu-ray drive. But I think people that really got their PlayStation 4s for gaming, they'll be able to live. They'll be able to live with that. I had to stop and focus on this for a second. Let's do this. Points. But yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be just fine playing a game that looks that much better. Because I sat there and watched the streams of, um, what was it? The Tomb, the Tomb Raider. I watched that stream in 4K. And man, it is amazing. I, I played it in regular 1080p on my PS4. I played that game a, a while ago. Of course, it's a remaster. But the fact that that upscaling made that that drastic of a difference to a system is completely amazing to me. So I'm still going to be on board with it for that. They're saying that it's 100 bucks cheaper. If you want to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges, then a one terabyte hard drive gaming system to a one terabyte hard drive gaming system, it's definitely it's a $50 difference. You lo okay, so you're paying 50 bucks more for the PS4 Pro. And you're gonna lose that ultra Blu-ray drive, but honestly, I'd much rather have better gaming quality, and I'm going to get better gaming quality out of that. But fifty dollars for three times the system minus a UHD Blu-ray drive, I, I think I'll manage. I think I'll be okay. What else did they add? Okay, they're using DDR5 RAM, 
Uh, I know that he's gonna pull more power from the wall. I've, I've seen that it, 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 they've up the, the they've up the supply to. Oh hell, I'm split attention between this and that. I don't want to get ganked. But they they. <coughs> I'm gonna go back to the base. I'm already at level six. So they've upped the, the amount of juice in the power supply, so that's gonna lead to more stable gaming. And of course that 4.2 teraflops is a large reason that I'm, I'm gonna push for it. Now when the Xbox One Scorpio comes out, I'm not gonna sit here and act like the PS4 Pro is still the better gaming system. I'm gonna have to admit that the Xbox One S with six teraflops should be the better gaming system and I'm figuring that they're gonna put a UHD Blu-ray driving in it as well. Yeah, I actually do play with a PS4 controller. And I know a lot of people thought it was going to be a problem coming from PC over to PlayStation 4. But it's, it's not really, it's not really that, that hard for me. I actually do really good in every match with this freaking controller. But I think it's because I've been playing controller-based games for so long. Let's see this guy, this guy. That could be easy points. But yeah, so the PS4 Pro is, is going to have, huh? I don't, I don't think so for Xbox, unfortunately. I really wish that Sony and Xbox would come together on the servers at least. Because I have a lot of friends that play Xbox, and I wouldn't mind playing with them. Like, I was an Xbox player before I came over to Sony. The only reason I have Sony instead of Xbox right now is simply because... My Xbox 360 crapped out on me so many times with the Red Rings of Death that I decided to buy a PS3. And when Xbox One came out, I didn't like the DRM stuff they were talking. So once again, Sony won my money. And at this point, Xbox One S, another chance for me to buy an Xbox. It has a UHD Blu-ray player, which I can just go out and buy one of those for not that much money. I mean, yeah, sure, they're, they're pretty costly, but I can buy one of those. I want my gaming console to be a gaming console. Of course, I would have loved to have gotten it for free in the PS4 Pro. I mean, I'm not going to complain with free ever, but why is it take so long to come back? I'm not going to complain about free whatsoever, so if they had decided to throw that UHD Blu-ray player into the PS4 Pro, man, I would have been completely happy with that. But I'm still going to be happy with the fact that I won't have to watch textures render when I'm playing a game like Paragon. I've probably played well over a thousand hours of this game, man, no lie. Like, I, lo I love Paragon. It's probably like, if I, if I cut my system on, it's probably to play Paragon at this point. Steve, uh, Steven, I'm guessing you play on Xbox? Oh, you filthy bastard. <laughs> No, no. Ha. And that is... Why is he setting fire to his own dude? That guy is... That, that is the... Did you see that Iggy just now? But yeah, Paragon is a, a free-to-play game. I'm pretty sure if you have a PC, it, it, I don't know if it's still free on PC, but PlayStation... PlayStation 4 is a free game. Um, What else is it? I know I, had, I know I had another thing to talk about. I've explained that the true difference in price between the Xbox One S and the PlayStation 4 Pro is only about 50 bucks. Now, I mean, if you want to subtract, uh, and this is what I found out. The difference in cost to install a UHD Blu-ray drive in the PS4 would have been about $15 for Sony. Now, why would Sony decide to cheap out on a console? Like, you think I would have cared if they told me it was going to be $399 or without a, a UHD Blu-ray player, or if they told me, okay, it's going to cost $415 with a Blu-ray player, with a UHD Blu-ray player. I would happily play, paid the extra 15 bucks for it. Like, I, I would not have tossed and turned over my sleep about a $15 difference for, Jesus, he just lining this whole road with that. Um, but yeah, $15 difference to add a UHD Blu-ray player to it. And Sony, Sony right now is, is doing damage control. They're saying that, well, this gaming console is all about the games for the gamers. And, okay, sure, it is by far a better gaming console than the Xbox One S. But it doesn't have that UHD, like something 50 bucks cheaper than it does have, even though it's a far better console. The people who aren't familiar with tech specs, I've literally seen a guy say that 
teraflops doesn't make a difference to him. He just wanted, he, he didn't care about the teraflops. He just wanted the ultra Blu-ray player in his gaming console. Went from, say I play Smite a lot on Xbox, went from PC Smite to Xbox Smite. Yeah, well this Smite, this Smite on the, um, on the PlayStation 4, but I, I'm not sure if, if it's cause like, do we play with the uh, PC players or is it just PlayStation 4 players on the Smite service? I didn't even, I didn't even know it was on Xbox, so I, I just learned something there. The part that can that, so that's, that's, that's the one negative I can say about the, the PlayStation 4 Pro. But the fact that it has the extra power that is going to be able to upscale games to a... It, it, they say upscale 4K in, with this technology is roughly 90% of true 4K performance. Call of Duty is already... Well, Infinite, uh, Infinity Ward and uh, Call of Duty are already saying that their games are still going to run at 4K 60 frames a second. So I can't wait personally to play Call of Duty 4K 60 frames a second even though I've kind of fallen off the Call of Duty bandwagon and I'm, I'm more towards Battlefield. I'll probably wait to see if you can get um, Modern Warfare Remastered if you can get that completely separate because I'm not for all of like the new stuff that they did in the Call of Duty games. I used to be like really big in the first person shooters. I still am but I like a, a more traditional first person shooter. Than what Call of Duty has become. Call of Duty these days is just is catered to like 10 year old kids. And if you're a 10 year old kid and you watch my channel, don't take offense to it. It's just that I'm, I, I grew up in an era of first person shooters that required like tactics and skill and flanking points and just just outsmarting, but also being able to outshoot your opponent, not just being able to get lucky enough and drop in on top of them with the wall run. So for me, I'm, I'm against the, the, the way Call of Duty has gone, but I'm really happy to see that at least on the PS4 Pro, we will be seeing 4K 60 frames a second games. Now I'm, I'm pretty sure what they meant, I'm, I'm not sure, he, the, he said 4K native, 60 frames a second. He said that, but then again, you have to take everything that these guys who just come out to talk at conferences like this say with a grain of salt. I'm pretty sure it's going to be more like 1080p 60 frames a second and much high, much higher, um, ooh, let's get past that, much higher details than what we're used to in the Call of Duty game coming from the console side. So if it's going to be 1080p 60 frames a second, stable, upscale. Damn it. That's time for me to go back anyway. What are our junglers doing? I have next to no CP. I guess we're only 14 minutes in, but I'm used to having a lot more CP than this by now. Now back over to the, the Gideon build itself. It focuses heavily on damage. And for the time being, I'm going to kind of like try to focus on Paragon for a second. I know I've been like just talking about the PS4 Pro, but for me, it's literally exciting because if you're a PC player and appreciate it, Steven, I hope you sub the channel, man. Like if you ever, if you ever see a live stream go up, I try, I try to do at least one live stream a day. I missed one yesterday because I was really studying into this PS4 Pro thing. I know I did a video on the PS4 Pro yesterday. But I've been like making sure I had everything that I said correct and, and digging further into it because I don't want to provide you guys with information that just is completely and utterly wrong. You know, I, I don't I don't be the guy that lies to you about a system you're contemplating. Jesus, they're about to take this one too. I don't be the guy that lies to you about a system that you're contemplating buying or not. So I've taken a little bit of time off of Paragon, which is not something I really want to do, but when I see something like really technologically changing, it interests me, it in interests me. So seeing that upscaling is coming mainstream, 
people with PCs and consoles should both be happy about this, but I'm seeing that the PC community doesn't like the idea. It's one extra piece of technology that could potentially make it easier and cheaper on us and our systems to get 4K gameplay. Like, if they progress 4K upscaling to the point where it matches 4K quality or comes within like 99% of 4K quality, and you can use a computer that's half as powerful as what it would normally take, I mean, it's only good for everybody. Like, people look at the PC community and the console community as divided, and it's because they try to keep us separate. But it's all the community of gamers. Everybody that cuts on a game, gaming console or a PC and picks up a controller or a keyboard and mouse and cuts on a game, they're just looking for one thing, man. They're just looking to have fun. I want to be able to enjoy the game. Like, I'm not one of those guys that when I have my, my, my PC up and running, I'm, I'm not running... I'm not running frames tests. I'm not... Like, okay, when I first set up a system, sure, I'm sitting out, I want to check how many frames a second I can manage. I, I really want to see how all these things are working. But, is that what I'm going to spend my entire time gaming doing? Damn. Uh oh, that was what sense did that make for that dude? I'm not I'm not doing that good this game. I'm dividing my attention, I'm not getting good kills. What I wanna do at this point is push this guy. Now see he is tanky as hell with his magic. That's what I'm talking about. He went energy damage tanky, not physical damage tanky, several eyes gonna ruin him. I can't believe I missed that, dude. I don't want to get caught behind enemy lines. Now we're saving Finn. Right there. Ooh, let's get the hell out of that. Um, let's see what I'm at. Have I gotten a kill yet? God, I haven't gotten a kill yet. All right, I'm, I'm going to have to start hitting the jungle because my teammates aren't jungling. Dude, this game is awesome. If you Like, if you like Smite, Smite was the very first um, MOBA that I ever played, and I loved it. But like, once this game came out, honestly, this this took over Smite for me. Like, so if you like Smite, this definitely wins. It has the better graphics. The gameplay is pretty similar, but I'm I love the map setup. Yeah, I do. I was just trying to clear out means from under the team. Because at, at this point of the game, at, even at level 10, Mings are strong enough to do a lot of damage really fast. Drop this here, so. Holy hell. Let's get out of that. Yeah? Alright. Yo, that dude is tanky as hell. How much CSP? These dudes sitting at 27. That Iggy. Iggy can just form the hell out of CSP with those uh, flamethrower turrets. So I can see the next thing for me to get is going to be shock and a health potion. So I want to be able to know some of that armor that guy's stacking up. I'm pretty sure he's sitting at least at 100 energy armor right now. What's he at? 198 oh, energy armor. He's really, the Iggy is the carry right now. Like he's the guy that I have to worry about. coming in here. That team is playing it really smart. I can't believe I missed that. So I'm talking about put him out of his misery. Ah, oh, she took it from me. I don't have a mana potion yet. Gotta watch out for this cat. Alright. 
That is like one of the best Iggy's I've ever ran into in a pub, man. That's that's amazing. Like, yeah, man, our, our jungler isn't even hitting the harvesters or anything. I'm going to have to take on full jungle rolls in this one. I'm going to have to be the jungler and the laner if I wanna, want my team to win this one. And I, I see that happen a lot, honestly. It's, it's rather depressing. Okay, let's get this drop on these guys. That one out of the way. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up buying an Xbox One Scorpio. I'm not going to buy Xbox One S. I'm not going to buy a gaming console for 300 plus bucks that isn't even better than the launch PS4. Like, I'm not going to buy that. So, I'm going to wait until Scorpio comes out. I'm definitely six teraflops in a console. It's, it's, consoles are, are, are good because they're simple. Everybody can get into them. You don't have to be a tech genius to operate a console. No, man, get your, get your water. I'm trying to drink cold drink. You have a bladder infection eventually, watch. Um, let's see, what else, what, else, what else was it that I touched on with this thing? I saw that they did a change to the controller. There's going to be a newer dual shock for the PS4 people. And back to the, to the actual thing that kind of kept me away the most. It was literally like the things I would see like PC players. And I play both. I play console and PC. But some of the stuff I see from fellow PC players, it just rubs me the wrong way. They're like, they have this, they're like, if, you've, you've heard of P, if you're a PC player, you've heard of the PC elitist. Uh, they, like these guys, they have it in their heads that if consoles, consoles doing good does nothing good for PCs. But if consoles do good, that drives the market lower. That means that AMD, it, like, I barrel me on this, AMD makes... All of the all of the internals, all of the guts for consoles. How far out is this guy? Right there. AMD makes all of the they make all of the internals for these systems. Now AMD is losing the overall market share compared to NVIDIA and Intel. Now with AMD getting the amount of revenue that they're getting from selling from these consoles being sold, that's helping them with R and D, that's helping them push out better PC components. Better PC components means this, it's going to be cheaper because if AMD makes better components, they're of course going to undercut Intel's prices. If AMD undercuts Intel's prices, Intel has to get cheaper. If Intel gets cheaper, all components across the board are cheaper. AMD may even go slightly lower than what they were before. And the only way to answer a cheaper, equally good component is for Intel to go back to the drawing board and come out with something even better than what they had to begin with. So all it's doing is pushing both sides further forward. I don't want people to think that it has to be console or PC because at this point, consoles and PCs are the same thing and they work hand in hand. Let me get out of that. That Iggy is a freaking monster. How much power does do that? 36. It's one victim. I don't know what he was thinking standing there that long. I know he didn't see me use my ultimate. So why would he do that? Right, let's, let's put this right here. Use your time to quick CHP. I don't think that other Gideon, he's got to using his ults in the air down, but he's not nearly as good at aiming his basic. Did I just hear something come from behind me? Yes, I did.
Bye guys. What the hell? God, and that's when knowing your map comes in handy right there. 214 health with the strongest the strongest hero in the game right now is the Iggy and a Finn Mile on me. In some kind of way, I weasel my way out of that one. Uh, I've got to get back up ahead of this guy. He's at 39, wearing physical and energy armor already. Let's see. Yeah, and then get this for good measure because if I didn't have man in that last fight, I would have been SOL. Hey Steven, uh Steven Click, do you know for you know for a fact if you if if it's cross platform between PC and uh Xbox One and all of those others for Smite? God, I wanna get into this fight before it ends. Hey, I felt like that, huh? Oh, did I get him back? That bastard lived through that. No! Alright, at least they managed to go ahead and take another towel. Uh, I usually die about once a game with Gideon. I'm gonna try to keep it that way. Yeah, I didn't get any PXP out of that. Um. But while I'm actually dead, hopefully this is my only death for this game. I try to keep it down to one death a game. Come on, Rampage. Do your thing, man. Oh, hell. Get out of there. Like, go alt and jump. Actually, though, he's hanging in there. Like, how much armor is this dude rocking? 176. That's it. Oh, a little over there. They are in trouble. I don't think they can handle him. Yo, that rampage is good. We might actually stand a chance like that. that that was a nice play. He literally just took out their two physical characters. What, two of the physical characters? Who did they have left out? Chimera? Ah, I see the... And that's that damn Iggy again. Stack these points really fast. Oh hell. God, I don't think that Iggy has died yet, man. He has skated out of some some like really close situations, but he has not died yet. My damage starting to get pretty nice at this point. If I could get up there and match this guy in CXP, what's he at now? 45. Let's see, I'm on the jungle a little bit. Although I may have to help push my minions back out. That damage will be useful.
leveled up. I can't believe that didn't get the kill. Um, are you in a clan? I haven't played Smite in a while. I should probably get back on it. But I, I tend when I'm on Smite, I tend to play with Ra. Uh, Thor was the first person I played with for the longest, and then I got really good with Ra. So I played Ra until I got him to uh, get his legendary skin, and it's Osiris. It's a couple of the people I'm, I'm decent with. Uh, Mercury is one. I don't think I've played with any of the Rangers yet. I've played a couple of the tanks. Uh, what is it? Zeng Tian. Uh, I, can, I can't tell you exactly that's how you say his name or not, but yeah, that guy. All I want to do is help them cap a kill. For that one, huh? I want to kill that Iggy so bad, man, because I know his time is going to be crazy long at this point. Best is going to live. Not going to get me that Grux. Holy hell. Yeah, I didn't have that much time. Like, I literally got introduced to Smite a couple months before Paragon was brought to my attention. And then Paragon was what I was playing the hell out of at that point. We can all be friends, buddy. for a tower dive like that like that's that's the turning point I need right there oh hell I really want that little bit of extra shit I can hit the harvester that'll work how much power is it 51 all right, slowly closing the gap on him. I haven't tried Fenrir yet, but it looks like you really like um assassins. Let's see what we got here. Who is the biggest? I think I want that penetration just so I can hit this guy back. And see, I just finished talking at the start of this video how I almost never need that extra penetration. How much penetration do I actually have? Energy pen is at 64. And how much energy armor does this guy have? Ooh, I'm only ignoring 30% of his armor. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have to go for the extra penetration. Do I actually have it on here is the question. Oh, Gaon is war. Wait, isn't he that new guy that they just came out with, like, recently? It's like, I still try to keep track of, like, all of the games I used to play to a degree.
risky hitting that jungle. But we gotta slow them down. Did I miss him? How did the bastard get out of that? Oh yeah, Erlang Shin, that was him. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna need that added penetration on that dude. I can't hit him for anything in the world. And I just wasted my ult. Holy hell, Chimera, let's go get out of here. They're all paying attention to them. They could just like walk straight up our mid lane. Hit the harvester, kill minions. God, I'm the only one at 45 on my team. And they're back in the fight. I think it's over with this cat. God, I've been waiting to get that dude. That amount of armor is just crazy. Seven point five. Okay, I'm gonna cut this off. Oh, Magnolia. Let's see. Uh, I should have got this instead. Don't move. I think the reason I picked my, uh, Rise my mage is because he is really good at helping push lanes with his heals. I really wish this game had a good healer like that. Like it, it has, it has heals, but all of the healing abilities in, in Paragon, man, they, they eat mana like you wouldn't believe. Second they come back out of the tower, I'm gonna hit him with my up.
She hadn't did that, he was in trouble. Nope. No, 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 no. So much power to lose. He's already at 60. Uh, my team, team's pretty close. I'm at 57 and 50, so we kind of evening out. Who did I just see fall with really low health? I think we got this one, y'all. Actually, it's rather even at this point. He's at 60. Hell on that. I want my 60 before I go and spin. Why well, this be one of the times that I could have teleported out, gotten away safely, and uh, run to the whole enemy team in the jungle because I decided to stay for these last few hits. Oh, yeah, like, uh, doesn't she change back and forth between offensive and defensive? I've seen a couple people play with her. Yeah. Ah, do I want more physical? Or do I want the life steal? I think I want to actually go with this one in this game. Just because of how dangerous that Iggy is. Oh, hell, I miscounted this card. Okay. Discard you. Damn it, I can't believe I did that. And this should be a 10 count card as well. well what, what's called? I must have miscounted this one. That's what I miscounted. Okay, I gotta change that up. Uh, tough pick. I'm gonna go with that health. So I've gotta change out. But in my defense, though, I, like, never use this thing. Usually I put, um, what the hell is it? I put my stalker's key instead. Ah. Uh, what's towers under it? I should have kept the energy one for all of that. I wish I had realized that miscount. This dude's still gonna give me hell. What the hell is he? Did anybody see him? Catch him? Right, that's just, it's not just how much armor he has, it's how much freaking health this dude has. Oh, 
hell, I missed it. So close. I think I got my 10 kills like I like. I missed a lot of my kills. See, look how it's doing that rendering thing there. That's what I'm hoping that the PS4 Pro fix. It's like little things like that that do bug me. Now, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if this game runs at 30 or 60 frames. I'll have to look it up to see what it runs at on the PS4. Once again, 10 and 1. I try to ma I maintain about a 10 and 1 with Gideon. Like, either I get like 20 kills, 2 deaths, or I get 10 kills in 1. Or sometimes I go like 13 and no, no deaths at all. But... I maintain like a 10 to 1 ratio with him just with this one build and I leave myself enough changeability inside of it to where I can adapt mid-match to however the guys on the other team are playing like this guy for instance with plus 600 health plus another 100 health plus 700 health in physical armor plus 400 health in 198 energy armor and plus 300 mana than 700 more health he had no damage built into that build but Early on, that was enough to dominate. Later on, not so much. He was just getting pushed around the map. Uh, well, I'm not going to hop back in another another match, but for the people who are still watching, if you have any questions about the PS4 Pro, the Xbox One Scorpio, the Xbox One S, and the PlayStation Slim. The PlayStation Slim is no different than the OG, than the original PlayStation 4. It's just smaller. Smaller form factor, that's it, that's all you're getting out of it. They're gonna do several updates to allow HDR streaming to be played. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what they said, HDR content to be played through the, the older PS4 as far as streaming, but I'm not sure if it's going to be to the same quality as the PS4 Pro. Um, the Xbox One S received a slight overclock to the CPU or the APU, the Jaguar A APU that's inside of it, but it's still subpar to the original PS4. The Xbox One Scorpio will be the best console so far this generation when they launch it, if it meets the numbers they're saying that it's going to hit. This thing is six teraflops and it uses anything like the upscaling technology that Sony's using, no problem. Now, if it doesn't use upscaling, I'm gonna have a hard time understanding how a six teraflop system can, by some method, achieve 4K 30 or 4K 60. I would, I would love to see it. I mean, at least 4K 60. 4K 30 is probably possible in this thing with mid to low settings. So maybe that's what they're aiming for on Xbox One Scorpio. But for this season, if you're gonna pick anything, if you're more towards gaming, go PS4 Pro. If you really have to have an all-in-one and you want a 4k blu-ray player inside of your console then xbox one scorpio is yours and then it comes down to the difference of 299 dollars for a 500 gigabyte or 349 dollars for a one terabyte and if you guys want the one terabyte pro which is the only way they're offering it that i know of right now which i don't get why they didn't go with like two terabytes in this thing but a one terabyte pro is 399 I'm looking, I'm waiting around to see if they come out with any bundles because if you can't tell, I'm using these. I broke my PS4 goals. So, well, not so much me. My girlfriend sat on my PS4, but uh, I actually, Trav, I don't think I'm gonna run another one just yet. I'm about to eat and I'll be back on, but you have me added on PSN, so just shoot me a request when you see me back on. If you see me on Paragon, man, you know, anytime I'm on Paragon, you're free to jump in. Um, let's see, what was it? I had a lost train of thought. Well, 
hopefully that covered everything. If you guys have any more questions, if there's anything I skipped or I didn't answer or anything you disagree with in the video, comment down below. Um, like always, comment, subscribe, like the video. If you didn't like the video and I sucked at this game, hit the thumbs down, I suppose, if you just don't personally care for me, whatever. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the vid, and if you didn't, meh, I guess I can do better eventually. Not now. Y'all have a good one.